In this video, I'm going to boot and quickly demonstrate a few Altair 8-inch floppies. There's going to be far more to this video than initially meets the eye, so stick with me on this, and by the middle of the video, you'll, you'll see the plot twist I'm talking about. I've got uh, three discs here from a friend out in New Mexico that wrote these on his Altair floppy. One is an Altair DOS disc, the other is an Altair Disk Basic, and then I also have CPM for the Altair. All right, so let's go ahead and get this going. We'll set the uh, address to the bootloader ROM at uh, FF00. First disk we'll boot is Altair DOS, which requires us, like BASIC, to set the serial port here on the first four positions. We'll set that to be a 2SIO. All right, let's go ahead and uh, load up the floppy. Hit run. Okay, well that's about it for the boot. And if we look over here at the uh, monitor, see it's asking for memory size. We'll let it size it. We'll say no for interrupts. Highest disk number is 0, 2, 2. And there's the DOS prompt. And we'll tell it to mount disk 0. If you listen carefully, you can hear it working. takes about 15 seconds. It actually goes through every track on the desk. Okay, so that's done. Alright, so we're up and we're mounted. And now the directory command will show us what's on this disk. And this has memory test program on it. And it can run in automatic mode where it sizes memory and it's running a, a test right now. Alright, so that shows you the uh, Altair DOS disk. I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset this machine and put in the basic disk. Again, we'll come in here and we'll examine the bootloader. Basic wants those front panel switches set to tell it the serial port as well. Alright, let's put disk basic in. Hit run. All right, so that's done. They boot relatively quick. Now, basic wants memory size. Line printer. We'll put Okadata zero two two. We'll also mount here. Same procedure as disk basic or uh, Altair DOS. Reading every track on the disk. Alright, so it's back. And we can see what's on this disk doing a files command. And there's the files on this disk. Alright, so finally, let's load CPM for the Altair. We'll examine the bootloader ROM. CPM defaults to the 2SIO board, so you don't have to actually even put in um, the serial port. Go ahead and load up CPM disk. Hit run. And now CPM is up and running. And we can see what's on this disk. Alright, so there we have taken three off the shelf Altair disks uh, as written on an Altair drive. Actually, these were written like back four or five years ago, so they've been sitting on the shelf for a little while. And uh, run them just as you would expect to run a disk on an Altair. But you might have noticed if you're looking at this drive, this is not a standard Altair drive. This in fact is your good old venerable Shugart SA800. These drives are extremely reliable in their old age, unlike the Altair Pertec, Pertec drives which are hard to find and not very reliable. These are reasonably priced and um, amazingly reliable in their old age. Plus you don't have to have a um, Altair cabinet and the Altair buffer. We can hook directly to the drive with the ribbon cable and that makes this a much simpler solution in terms of cabinetry as well. 
What we have inside the Altair is a new floppy disk controller I've made that allows you to use a Shugart or other drive for that matter as a completely transparent replacement for the Altair drive. And as you notice, since we were running just off the shelf software, this controller, its presence is completely transparent to the software as well. Both the Altair and the software think it is talking to the original two board set that MIPS supply. So this combination of this controller and a Shugart drive looks identical to the Altair computer itself. It looks completely identical and transparent to all Altair software. And even the media, as you saw, we were reading and writing um, media written by somebody else on an Altair drive um, is completely transparent. This is going to be a great way to breathe life into your old Altair because these drives are not hard to get and they're reliable. Um, this controller will not be hard to get. Nowhere near as difficult to maintain and keep running as original Altair. Now, in addition to providing the disk I.O. functions, if you look closely, um, in case you need it, it's got uh, some ROM over there on the right. That's up to 8K of ROM, so you can certainly fit in your disk bootloader. And it's also got up to 64K of RAM on the board. As you can see here, I'm running basically just a CPU, a 2SIO board, and the controller. So this would be a good test environment where um, the new disk controller is providing pretty much all the RAM for the system. But you could certainly just use it to fill in the last little bit of space you don't have on original cards. Or if you don't have a ROM board, just use it for ROM. Or you don't have to use those features whatsoever. You can use just the controller aspect of it. Now, in addition to talking to rotating media like this Shugart, it'll also talk over a serial port and we can serve the disk content over a high speed serial port such as that it looks just as if it was coming off a disk drive. The Altair won't be able to tell the difference. So all these images we've been archiving online both on the Yahoo site and the Altair clone site uh, will be accessible and usable even if you don't bother with a floppy. Um, in addition, if you need to keep an old Altair floppy itself working but the controller is broken this controller will actually hook to an original Altair drive as well. I also have plans to make it work with a bunch of other drives, including the Altair mini disk, um, as well as uh, the 850 series and the Cubes and that kind of thing. They're all very small step from this 800. It's going to be a great way to breathe new life into um, old Altairs.